All right, guys, this is David Dodge, the discount property investor. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and comment down below that you subscribed. Every month we do a shout out to one lucky person who has subscribed and commented below. In this episode, we are going to talk about how to find motivated sellers. The name of the game in real estate investing is finding a motivated seller. Now, when it comes to finding motivated sellers, there are a lot of strategies and a lot of ways to go about doing this. Typically, whenever somebody comes to me that wants to be a new investor, I tell them, you need to learn how to wholesale properties. You need to start there. And the reason is, is because wholesaling real estate isn't really property investing, in my opinion. Wholesaling real estate to me is the marketing business. You are becoming a expert at marketing when you decide that you want to be a wholesaler. So I always say, learn how to market to motivated sellers to start. From there, you can then decide when those deals come in, if you wanna wholesale those deals, or if you wanna fix and flip those deals, or if you wanna do like me, add those to your portfolio of rental properties. So you have a lot of options once you come across a motivated seller. From there, you can then choose what you wanna do with that property. But let's talk a little bit more about how you find motivated sellers. So there's two, two approaches that I like to use when I am finding motivated sellers or I'm training somebody on my team or I have a student that I'm working with, we need to learn how to market to motivated sellers. So there's two ways I go about doing it. I like to look at it like this. You can either hunt for leads or you can fish for leads. Okay, so the difference between the two is very, very simple. Now think of it this way. When you go hunting, you get yourself a bow and arrow or a gun and you're on your feet typically and you go and you try to find prey. You try to find something that you can hunt. But essentially, you are having to go to that particular location. And it's the same exact way when it comes to real estate investing. If you are hunting for, for deals or, or motivated sellers, that's okay, but essentially you have to put in the time and the work, okay? You gotta have some hustle. So what does that look like? Well, you can cold call or cold text for sale by owners. You can find people that have properties for rent, so you can contact landlords. I also like contacting Section 8 landlords as well because typically somebody that has a Section 8 property doesn't own that property for very long unless they're a big investor. So you can go and you can hunt for those leads, you can door knock, you can network with other people, but essentially you are allocating time into locating those motivated sellers. That's what hunting consists of. The other way to find motivated sellers is you can fish for them. So imagine that you're at a lake and you have one fishing pole and you throw that into the water. Now you got a bobber out there in the lake. Now let's assume you put that pole in the ground and you go to your truck and you grab 10,000 more fishing poles. And one by one, you throw that line in the water. And when, you're, when it's all said and done, you have 10,000 bobbers on that lake floating around with bait beneath the uh, bobber. So you're fishing. So what does fishing look like? Well, fishing typically requires capital. It requires a little bit of money. So if you don't have a lot of money, start with hunting because you have to have a budget allocated for time versus a budget allocated for money. So whenever you're fishing for these leads, the best way to go about that is to put your message in front of somebody that may be motivated. What does that look like? Well, we buy lists offline. We use services like PropStream and ListSource to acquire lists of vacant houses. We acquire lists of tax delinquent houses. We acquire lists of absentee owned properties which doesn't necessarily mean they're vacant, it just means that the owner doesn't live there. It just means that the tax records or the tax bill gets sent isn't that address. So that's a second home or a rental property or something along those lines. So the vacants, the absentee owns, pre-foreclosure, death, 
divorce, disease, everybody loves the three Ds. But any reason why somebody would become motivated to sell their home is what you are seeking. So if you're gonna hunt for those people, then you can go down to the courthouse and you can find the people that are you know, in foreclosure, go door knocking, you can do cold calling or cold texting from Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Zillow, for the for sale by owners or the landlords that are advertising their property for rent. Now I call landlords all the time. Hey, this is Dave. I see you have this property for rent. I'm actually not looking to rent it. I was actually curious if you had any interest in selling that property. Start the conversation like that. This is not rocket science. Keep it simple. Now, when you do fishing, there's lots of ways to do that as well. But again, when you fish, you're going to need some capital to put into a marketing budget. So you're either going to have a monetary budget for fishing, or you're going to have a time allocated budget for hunting because hunting is going to be time intensive or it's going to be time consuming. I do both in my business. We have people in our office that cold call all day long, outbound to motivated sellers, however they may look. And then we do a lot of marketing to get our message in front of these people. So what do we do in terms of fishing? Well, we buy these lists online for vacants, absentee owned, high equity, love the high equity or even the unknown equity list. Those are some of my favorite lists. We also get pre foreclosure lists. We get lists from individual companies online that have niches. So one company that we're working with right now, whenever somebody applies for credit and gets denied, we get a lead. They sell that lead to us. From there, we can pile all those leads and we send them a letter or a postcard. Another way to fish for leads is to use a pay-per-click campaign like Google AdWords or even Facebook. You create an ad, you drive traffic to that ad, for a cost, pay per click, and then people will land on your landing page and they can fill out a form or they can call your phone number. So you have direct mail is one approach. You have AdWords or Facebook pay per click marketing is another approach. There's tons and tons of approaches. We also have a small radio ad that plays twice a day in my local market of St. Louis, Missouri. Again, all we wanna do is we wanna put a message out and get that message in front of our customer. Who is our customer? Well, typically we're looking for motivated sellers. That's what this video is all about. How to find and locate these motivated sellers. So if you are hunting for these leads, you are not gonna necessarily know if the person you are calling is motivated and that's okay, this is a numbers game. I can almost in ensure you and guarantee you that if you call three to 500 people, one of those people will be a motivated seller. Sometimes you only have to make 50 to 100 calls before you will stumble across a motivated seller. Now, when it comes to fishing, we can actually buy lists that have the assumption of motivation. So for example, we get lists from the probate court. The people that are on this list aren't all motivated. Of course they're not. However, whenever we get that list, we are assuming that a high percentage of those people either are motivated today or will become motivated in the very near future. So we will mail that individual a postcard and we send out thousands of postcards each and every month, sometimes tens of thousands of postcards. And what happens is, is people will get those postcards and they'll either call you, they'll save it or they'll throw it away. And the reason that I threw the middle one in there, they save it, is because people are still calling postcards that I have sent three and four years ago. We have different numbers on different campaigns. And also we change numbers up and change campaigns up. So we are able to track when somebody calls us from a postcard that we sent three or even four years ago. It is awesome. Now, whenever you are sending postcards or you are getting your message in front of a potential motivated seller, you want to make sure that you get that message in front of them multiple times. People that get into this business and they send one or two rounds of postcards, most of the time they will fail. The reason is, is because yes, of course, you're gonna get some phone calls from that initial campaign, but ideally you're gonna need to send a seller four, five, six, sometimes as many 10 postcards before they start to recognize who you are in your message and they have the courage to pick up the phone and to 
call you. So consistency in this business is very, very, very important. Now, let's just talk about some of the reasons why somebody would be motivated. Again, we talked about vacant leads. We talked about absentee owned properties. We talked about landlords that may become tired. Maybe they bought a property to landlord or you know to rent out and they're tired of dealing with the tenants and the toilets. Great. I have a property manager who deals with all of that. So I would be more than happy to buy that property from them. Now, the coolest thing about motivated sellers is that you are trading them convenience for a discount. That's all you're doing as a real estate investor, specifically a wholesaler. You are going to trade them a convenient situation. So whatever problem they have that needs to go away, you're gonna solve it by purchasing that home and in return you are going to get that property at a discount can you find discounted properties on the mls well yes of course but they're very few and far between so in my business we try to locate those motivated sellers before they go contact an, a real estate agent or before one of my competitors is able to get their message in front of them disease death and divorce the three d's those are always great reasons for somebody to be motivated. Now, when you go out and you buy a list of motivated sellers, let's say you go out and you get the county's record of all the divorces that have taken place in the last 18 months. Well, of course, not everybody on that list is motivated enough to trade a discount for you to solve their problem. They may have other solutions, but I can tell you this, one person on that list is motivated today. And the cool thing is, is every day is a new day. Tomorrow, somebody else on that list may be motivated tomorrow in order to do the deal with you. So every day, the motivation of these sellers changes. And that's why you want to hit these people with multiple mailing campaigns. And that also could be texting or cold calling if you don't have the resources or the funds to go buy postcards. You can purchase lists and you can skip trace those lists. And then you can call or text those individuals. You don't always have to just call the for sale by owners or the rentals. There's so many different ways. It all starts with a seller being motivated if you wanna get a discount. Whenever you're shopping properties on the MLS and you're using an agent, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, those sellers are looking for retail. That's why they went to the MLS. When you are dealing with a motivated seller, typically there's no agents that are gonna get in the way. Or another way to look at it is no agents are gonna be required a commission. So you're able to give them a lower offer than they would have otherwise accepted on the MLS and they will net out the same amount of money, if not more. Also, when it comes to motivated sellers, a lot of times these people are nervous or embarrassed about showing the property. So we buy a lot of houses that are hoarder houses, and these houses are just filthy, dirty, disgusting, trashed. I don't care because when I see problems, I see profits. But a lot of these people are so embarrassed that they don't want a bunch of people coming into their property and seeing how they live. So instead, they will call somebody like me that sends them a postcard that advertises that I will make it easy for them. So what are some of the things that I do to make a motivated seller wanna do business with me? Well, there's really only three things, and we could expand into multiple things, but there's really only three things. One, I'm gonna buy your property as is. I'm gonna make it so simple for you you can pack what you want and leave what you don't. No inspections that I'm gonna come back and ask you for more money on. And I'm not gonna require you to update that property or paint it or clean the gutters or any of it. So number one, as is. Number two, cash. I don't need to go to the bank and qualify for a loan. I use hard money lenders and private money lenders to purchase all of my real estate deals, no matter if it's wholesaling, fix and flip, or rentals. I use private money to buy all of them. So I pay with cash and I close quickly. Why does number two matter so much? Well, it's so simple. Most of the time people have to go to the bank and they have to be approved for a loan. That in itself can be difficult. But the second part of that is it's time consuming. And that's where it leads me to number three, quick. I could close a deal with a seller in typically 10 to 14 days, sometimes sooner. So as is cash, and quick, 
Those are the three things that I am trading for a discount. Remember, all I do as a real estate investor when I'm working with a motivated seller is I convince them that they need to take my offer because they have a problem. And they, in turn, are gonna convince me that I need to buy that property because they have a problem and they need my capital. And in return, I get that property for a discount. From there, once you find a motivated seller, You've either cold called them via hunting or door knocked them, or you've sent them a letter and they've called you. That's our fishing side that we talked about. From there, you now have a business. If your phone is ringing with motivated sellers, you now have the option and the ability to then wholesale those deals, buy them to fix and flip, or buy them to add to your portfolio of rentals. But it all starts with finding motivated sellers. I actually have a course that has 50 plus ways to find motivated sellers off market. If you take the free wholesale course, at the bottom of that course, you'll see some additional links to some other courses. And that is one that I highly recommend if you are watching this video. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this video and comment. We do a shout out at the end of every month and one lucky person will be recognized. Also, don't forget if you wanna learn how to find motivated sellers in more detail, go take my free course, freewholesalecourse.com, and we will show you how we find motivated sellers every day. In fact, my business wholesales eight to 10 deals a month minimum. Sometimes we're doing 12, 14, 16 wholesales in a month, and every single one of those deals has a motivated seller behind the scenes. That's who we are buying those properties from. So don't forget, check out the free course and subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next video. Thank you.